Welcome to the Global Author Podcast. I'm Matt Connor Whiteley, science fiction, fantasy, and a global author, bringing you publishing, writing, book marketing, and a global author ideas of your book to help you sell more books and write better books. For more information and your free global author training, please go to theglobalauthor.com. And here's the show. Hi everyone and welcome to episode 33 of the Global Author Podcast with me, Colin Wiley. And today's episode is on Cobra Writing Life and my 2021 um, review of it. And it is Friday the 5th of February 2021 as I as as I overcall this and I cannot believe that it's a February. <laughs> Despite the pandemic, I think the years are going pretty quickly. So for today's episode, I really enjoyed because Cobra Writing Life as a global author, as a business person, it is a, it is, it is a great platform. I love it. It's and also Cobra Writing Life really cares about its authors compared to another retailer that shall not be named for legal purposes. <laughs> okay, but hopefully though you're going to get a lot out of like today's episode and I really, really enjoyed it. Plus I dictated it, which I'm quite pleased that I'm actually quite pleased with. So moving on to the personal update before I dive into the content part of today's episode. So there's just a few things that I wanted to like tell you about. So but this week I finished my developmental psychology book which turned out to be a massive update because the second edition was just 18,500 words. But the third edition is thankfully um, a minimum of one of 41,500 words. I'm really, really pleased with this. And this is the longest non-fiction book I've done by about 10,000 words. I'm really pleased with it. I think it's a great book and I know people are going to get a lot out of this. But it just goes to show that when it comes to like second editions, just keep writing if you've got something to say, just keep writing it. People will find it useful. And I've actually found out that I really, that I'm, that I don't dislike their mental psychology as much as I thought. So I really, really enjoyed it. So if you're writing a second edition or a new edition, just write it. Just have fun with it. And literally, and quite literally empty yourself with everything you know on the topic. Plus, I found out this week that that I have doubled my income on Google Play in January 2021 simply through global pricing. And I was trying to figure out, right, Connor, why did you manage to double your income in January? And it turns out that the only thing I did for Google Play was global pricing. So if you're still thinking, oh, global pricing doesn't work, it won't help me sell more books. I think it might do. Of course, you might not get the same results as me. You might do tons of better, but I think that my little Google Play experiment is definitely working and I'm really, really pleased. Speaking of which, I managed to sell a book on Google Play in Czechnia, in the Czech Republic. So I was very pleased. I was like, wow, I've never sold a book in that place. And I was following Joanna Penn's Twitter account like this a week and and she sold books in 162 countries. And I'm just like, wow, <laughs> wow, well done her. And I definitely think tonight or this afternoon, I'm actually going to try and... Um, count all the places of where I've like sold the books because I was thinking about this like last night like I'm the global author but I have no idea how many um, countries I've like sold in I know I've sold in at least 20 definitely at least 20 so like it's really really like um um interesting like and if you're like um listening to this and I really want you to like reach out and tell me how many countries like you've sold uh, books in though well like I said because I would love to um to know and then the only other interesting thing uh, that I will want to tell you about is tonight I will be planning um, a new fantasy book with my new fantasy trilogy or series. It's definitely going to be more like of a series. I'm sort of I was sort of thinking about it, and I think it's going to sort of have like five books in it, but I don't know yet. Just, well, I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to it. It's an idea I've been batting around for ages, and probably like a few months. It's gonna it's like going to be like no ability. Um, it's going to have a slight romance edge, which I don't usually write, so I doubt I will ever class it as romance, but I don't know, I think there's just going to be a bit of um, unresolved sexual tension between the characters, so I really, really am looking forward to it. And as always, I always love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. You can email me, connorwiley, connorwiley.net. You can, you can always leave a comment on the show notes at The Global Author, and you can always tweet me on Twitter at The Global Author. And the sponsored product for today's episode is... Uh, my human branding for authors book which i absolutely love this is what actually got me into the non-fiction for writers area because because if you've been following the creative pen and like joanna pen then you will know that artificial inner intelligence is coming and it will disrupt the publishing industry 
meaning that would that be any way to actually surf at the change or one of the things you brought, I can do is uh, develop a human brand that people will love and uh, connect with uh, connect with that. So I really, really uh, recommend that you actually buy this book, develop a human brand so people will know that you are a real human and they can learn to connect with you because humans connect with humans and we want to buy from people that we know, like and trust. So this book goes through so many different ideas, so many different ways how you can develop a, a human brand. So whatever your personality, whatever you're into, there is something for you in this book. So that's Human Brand Involvers, How to Be Human in an AI World, available on all major ebook retailers like Amazon, Kobo, or Google Play, and you can get to the you can get the payback and the large print editions from Amazon. So but that's enough of the personal update. Let's move on to the content part of today's episode. So we're moving on to the content part of today's episode. So we're going to be talking about Kobo Rice Knife and my 2021 review for global authors. So with all the tough publishing platforms available to us as independent authors, there is one platform that I love beyond all else, both as a global author and as a business person, and it has to be Kobo Rice Knife, a great self-publishing platform you can use whether you go to them directly or you go through a distributor like Drafts Digital. And I love Kobo, I cannot stress that enough. So what is Kobo Writing Life? So what Kobo is, is that it's a really easy to use self-publishing platform that allows you to get your book into over 190 countries. Yes, I'm going to come back to that later. And in this episode, I'm going to be telling you about why I love it and how you can use it in your own self-publishing business or your own global author business. So the reason why I love Kobo is because all of us authors are used to publishing platforms that don't necessarily care about us. And their primary focus is not books and their authors. Yes, I am talking about one particular bookstore. <laughs> However, Kobo Rice and Life is really different. They absolutely love their authors and they really care about us was because they constantly put out great resources for us and they have their own Kobo Writing Life podcast I really recommend because they simply want us to do well because they know if they if we do well then they do well and yes and also comes back to they have a global perspective which is why they are the number one direct bookstore for global authors and one of my favorite features of Kobo has to be the promotion tab because I'm a bit confused to why they've not made it available to everyone automatically because they say that you have to email them but I do understand it because only authors who take Kobo seriously and take self-publishing seriously would actually want to create good books for their promo so it actually just makes it easier for them so I've just answered my own question but you can only get the um, promotion tab if you publish a director with them and you need to email them okay and I think yes and the email address is co- is writinglife at kobo.com so one of the reasons I really enjoy the promotion tab is because it allows you to get your hands your hands into the books <laughs> your books into the hands of the Kobo merchandisers and this allows you to get your books promoted to all of their readers from box set sales to daily featured deals and this can get you great visibility on the Kobo store and they also do this for foreign languages too like if you're struggling to promote French book you've got to go with Kobo I think because because they tend to have quite good deals for foreign language titles especially French because of course larger stores Canada and um, Canada is French and English and something else I love about Kobo is that they allow you to get your books into 190 countries. I'm going to say that again. 190 countries. I cannot even name 190 countries. Cannot even name something close to that. So I think that is just amazing because no other book distributor or ebook retailer allows you to get your books into that many countries. And the main reason that how Kobo does this is because of their great partnerships. Because Kobo really loves working with international partners. Um, like Walmart in the US, Frank in France, and so many great retailers. So this allows you to get to access to a massive, massive market. And as global authors, that is what we're all about, reaching as many readers as possible so we can find new readers that enjoy our work, buy our books, and hopefully become lifelong fans. But the last thing that I love about Kobo is their um, subscription program which I really want them to come to the UK because I really want to be part of a Kobo Plus like, as a reader. So Kobo Plus is a great opportunity for authors and writers simply because we need to get our books into the hands of voracious readers but like just so our books will be devoured and enjoyed and Kobo Plus allows this to happen because in the Netherlands definitely Belgium and Canada Kobo Writer Life is the, is the main way how those readers read their books on a Kobo, meaning that if your book is not in Kobo Plus, you're missing out on tons, 
of those of those Kobo markets, which is a shame. And of course, if you think I'm lying or if you think I'm just being stupid, please go to episode 16 of the Global Author Podcast because this is what I talk about how great subscription services can be for authors. So the Global Author Perspective. So I do have to admit I'm really impressed with this actual blog post because as I'm doing the podcast I'm actually sort of like re-reading it to like make sure that like it's okay and I really like it because I because I started to do some dictation which I don't tend to do. So as a global author Kobo is one of my dream platforms. I would love more retailers to have this sort of reach and to be this supportive of authors because the amount of countries they allow us to get us into is great. But it's also about the currencies, which, as you know from previous episodes, I'm really into global currencies. Currencies Simply because Kobo allows us to get us into the Taiwan money, the Philippines, Malaysia, and all these great other countries that want to buy your books. But the main reason why I really recommend Kobo for global authors is because the US is not their best marketplace. It's not even the biggest. In fact, it's the fourth. So the US does not even make Kobo's top three, meaning that if you want to break out into the more international markets, you've got to go with Kobo because the biggest marketplace is Canada, then it's the UK, then it's another, or then it's Australia. I completely forgot that until and until we're then, meaning that, that if you want more Canadian readers, if you want more UK readers, if you want more Australian readers, got to have your books on Kobo because it's like me. If you want me to buy your book, you have to be on Kobo. Because sometimes people recommend books on Amazon to me that are in KU and I don't even look at them. I see the KU sign and I'm going, no, sorry, simply because I don't read on Amazon. On Amazon. And it's as simple as that. But I also know that lots of other European markets like France, Italy and some other European markets do rely heavily on Kobo. But because when I was living at university, I was talking to my um, flatmates about it. So now I want to talk about my tips for Kobo writing life. Okay, so you have to request the promotions tab because that will allow you to get great promotion opportunities and that's how I make most of my money off at Kobo. And if you get rejected for the promotions tab, email them again and hopefully it will go to someone else because it is basically company policy. Like If you ask for it, like um, they tend to like give it to you. And once you've got the promotions tab, if you keep applying and you keep getting rejected, just keep applying. You will get accepted one day. And if you have a promotion idea or if you want some sort of help or if you want to let them know about pre-order and if they can do anything for them, just email them. They're really friendly people and they always want to hear from authors. And of course, always globally price your books so they look attractive and affordable for the global markets that Kobo thankfully caters to. Kobo does not allow you to put keywords in like Amazon, which is of course how readers find out your books. But the wonderful people I read did some research in, in 2020 and they found that if you put the keyword in the subtitle, that tends to bear a lot of weight on a Kobo. So if you want to get found, you've got to sort of put a, a keyword in your subtitle. But of course, don't keyword stuff. For example, with this new fantasy trilogy or series that I'm going to be doing, I'm going to call it the Fireheart Fantasy Series or, some, or something like that. Just so I have the fantasy keyword in there. Okay, so hopefully you're really excited about Kobo. Or plus, I also really recommend Killing It on Kobo by the former director of Kobo Vita Knife, the wonderful Mark Leslie Lefebvre. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I love Kobo Vita Knife and hopefully you will too. And as always, I always like, like, love to know your thoughts and feelings on today's episode. So just email me, tweet me, leave a comment on, um, on the show note. And if you know someone who would enjoy the podcast or today's episode, then please tell them about it. I'm always really pleased when you wonderful people spread the word about the podcast so have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time thanks uh, for listening today i hope you found it useful for more information please go to theglobalauthor.com and if you want to connect then please reach out to me on twitter at the global author and you can find me on facebook for your free and exclusive global author video training please go to theglobalauthor.com forward slash free have a great day everyone and i'll see you next time